This is the beginner's guide to the pro version of Adobe Character Animator. Let's get started. So here I am in Character Animator, and you can see here in the upper right, it says that I'm currently in the starter version of this wonderful tool. And that's great. If you haven't already watched my video on the starter version, you should definitely watch it. But in this case, I'm gonna click on Starter and switch to Use Pro. Now that I've done that, the interface changes subtly, and I get a few different characters to animate, and I also get this fantastic option of using the Puppet Maker. I'll show this at the end of this video, so make sure you stay to the end to learn about this wonderful option. But now that I've set Character Animator to be in Pro mode, I'm ready to animate one of these characters. I'm going to browse down here, and I'll select this character, Tull. By clicking on Tull, it takes me to the record screen in Character Animator, and it loads the character of Tull into this scene. Now immediately, you should notice that Tull is speaking and mimicking the words that I say. So anytime I talk, Tull's mouth is moving. If I raise my eyebrows, Tull raises his eyebrows. If I look to the left or look to the right, Tull is trying to mimic me. If I move my head side to side, Toll's head moves side to side. Now, how is this happening? First of all, if you look here in the upper right, you'll see that my microphone is turned on. So I do have a microphone set up with this computer and it can hear me. And so Toll is automatically lip syncing my words. I also have my camera turned on. I've blurred this out so that you're not blinded by my extreme handsomeness, but if I hadn't blurred this out, you would see my face just as Adobe Character Animator can see my face so that it can mimic what I'm doing with my face and my head and sometimes even my hands or shoulders. Speaking of these settings here in the upper right, the next thing I should do in getting ready to record in Adobe Character Animator is I should calibrate my camera. So I'm gonna change the angle of my webcam so that it can see my full head, and then I'm just going to look straight into my webcam and click Calibrate. It finished. Okay, now that I've done the calibration, here in the upper right, my face is outlined in green. And you may not be able to see that because I'm blurring it out, but my mouth is outlined in green, parts of my nose are outlined, my eyes, my chin, my jawline, those are all outlined in green. That tells me that Character Animator can sense where my facial features are so that it can better mimic me. If you don't calibrate your camera, Character Animator will still work, but it won't work quite as well as it will if you calibrate first. Now that I've calibrated my camera and Tull is synced to my head movements and my face movements, the next thing to do in most cases is to choose a background. So I can go here underneath the scene that Tull is in and I can click this button here. It looks like the silhouette of a person, but it stands for background. So when I click on it, I can choose a different color for the background. I could make it completely black if I want to, and that's a good option, I think. We also have, uh, like I said, other colors to choose from, and we have actual scenes. Let's say an Old West scene, a cityscape, that's a nice background. We could have like fall colors and trees, a beach scene. So select the background scene that you want for your recording. Now it is also possible to import and use your own background. If this video proves to be popular, I'll make another video that shows you how to do that and how to set up and arrange that background image so that it works the way you want it to work in your recordings. But for now, let's just go with this beach background. Now the first First time you use the pro version of Adobe Character Animator, I'm sure you'll find it to be kind of daunting. There's a lot of buttons and options here at the right. We have some options underneath our character and background here, and we have some options here at the left. And in addition, we have a timeline. So this can be kind of daunting. It seems very difficult, but I'm here to guide you to the most crucial, most important options in Character Animator. So keep watching. You'll notice that I have a record button here underneath Tull and my my background and I could simply click this button to begin recording my animation. Before I do that though I want to point out a couple of things to be aware of. 
First, here at the right, we have puppet track behaviors, and you can see that some of them have a red circle next to them, and some are grayed out, or maybe even not selected at all. So for example, I just turned off lip sync, and now look at Toll. Even though I'm still talking, character animator can still hear what I'm saying, it's not lip syncing to Toll. So if you try to record your animation and the lip sync isn't working, that's the first thing to check. Make sure that lip sync is turned on. You may also want to check to make sure your microphone isn't muted. Same with your camera. Is your camera set up properly, or is it muted, etc. The other thing to be aware of is here at the left, we have some controls for the character that we've selected. And you can switch between controls and triggers. If you browse through the triggers or the controls, you'll see various ways in which you can change how the character behaves on the screen. So for example, if I tap the number one, then Toll gets a little melancholy. He squints, and this is a toggle. So if I tap one again, he goes back to being his cheerful self. If I tap two, he really gets upset. If you tap three, you can see he closes his eyes part way. Four is kind of happy and blissful. Five is similar. That stands for impressed. We've got six. Now notice with six, with a frown, Toll stops lip syncing. So that's something to be aware of and to watch out for. You can tap frown, but don't leave it on very long. We have a whole bunch of other controls to think about and use. J makes Toll question all of existence. A makes him laugh. D is just heartbreaking, but again, he's not lip syncing me. So if you're gonna use these controls, you need to learn which ones stop the lip syncing and which ones continue the lip syncing. The F key makes Toll break down and cry, and we could go on and on. There's all sorts of options. Here's my favorite, that's H. This is Toll in love. I'll tap H again to turn off that toggle. Underneath the different facial expressions and emotions, we have arm movements. So I can tap Z to let Toll rest his arms. Tapping C makes Toll wave. Tapping Y is another hand movement, which in some countries is not a good thing to do. The country in which I learned Spanish, this is a kind of a vulgar hand motion, but Adobe may not know that. I tap L and Toll puts his arms up to the side. And so there's all of these wonderful options for arm movements, hand movements, and for facial expressions. Now, if you go to triggers, you'll see some of those same options, but without the visual to help you know what it's gonna look like. We can outstretch Toll's arms by tapping O. We can have him growl by tapping G. So it's really most of the same options, but in a list form rather than with icons showing what the character is gonna do. Okay, I'm ready to record. I'll just press this record button. I get a countdown. Hi students, welcome to a new year of Spanish. You're gonna love this school year, it's gonna be amazing, and it's just gonna be a joy to behold. That's why I say you're gonna love it. So get ready to learn all sorts of amazing new vocabulary and grammar to help your Spanish to improve just dramatically. Let's have a great new year of Spanish. Okay, I'm gonna press this stop button to stop my recording, and Adobe Character Animator now puts here on the timeline all of the movements that I did with the character, the controls, also my audio, it's all here on the timeline. Now during my recording, you may have noticed that toward the end, I clicked on Toll's hands and made his hands and arms move. And I should have told you that before I pressed record, but it is possible to pose your character's arms and hands as you're speaking just by using the mouse. Okay, so what I've taught you in Adobe Character Animator, those are the basics. That's really all you need to know to create your character animations in the pro version of Adobe Character Animator. And this is real time animating. Just think about how amazing that is that you can create these animations without hours and hours and hours of tedious work. It's amazing. So at this point, if you're happy with your animation, all you need to do is look up here in the upper right and click on this quick export button. I'll show you the details of that in just a minute. But once you've exported your animation, you're good to go. You're done using Character Animator. But I want to take your knowledge of Character Animator a step or two further. So I hope you'll continue watching. And remember, at the end, I'll show you how to use the Puppet Maker to create your own custom characters. But let's take your knowledge of Character Animator a couple of steps further. Here on the timeline, you'll notice that almost every element of this recording and of the animation can be edited or
or moved. If you look down here, there are these little vertical green lines. And if I zoom in using this slider here, you'll see that each vowel or consonant that Character Animator sensed from my voice is listed here. And I can delete any of this to fine tune the lip syncing and the animations of this video. Not only that, but I can change how the arms moved, how the eyes reacted. This timeline is all very editable. In my case though, the only edit I want to make to the timeline is that I kept recording a little too long. If I put this blue playhead toward the end of my recording and press play, you'll hear what I mean. Okay, okay I'm, I'm gonna, gonna press, press this stop. stop. I want to get rid of the end of this recording because it's not really relevant to my Spanish students. So to do that, there's a few ways I could accomplish it, but I'm just gonna make sure that the playhead is where I want the scene to end, and I'm gonna right click on the playhead here and choose set scene duration to playhead. Once I do that, it kind of trims out the rest of my animation so that it ends right here. Okay, before I export my animation, I've noticed a little problem with my animation. Look right here. I have this little rectangle here with a handle on the left and a handle on the right. This is going to limit my final animation to just these few seconds. That's not what I want. So I'm gonna click on the first handle and expand it all the way to the left, and the right handle and expand it all the way to here. So now that entire portion of my animation will be included in the exported video. So if you ever have trouble when you're exporting and you find that your exported video is way shorter than it should be, or it doesn't include all of the content that you want it to include, it's probably because of this tool here. You wanna make sure that everything that you want included in your animation is is included in the span of this bar. Okay, at this point now I can go here to the upper right and click on Quick Export. I should notice where it's going to export my document and I can select the kind of quality I want for the exported animation. I'm gonna stick with low quality, but you could make it a higher quality if you want. I'll click Export and Character Animator is now combining and compiling all of my words, all of the movements of the hands and arms of our character, his facial expressions, the controls that I used. It's all being being compiled into one mp4 video that I can do what I want with. Let's give this a minute to finish compiling and then I'll resume the video. Okay, Character Animator has finished exporting my video. Here's the final product. Hi students, welcome to a new year of Spanish. You're going to love this school year. It's going to be amazing and it's just going to be a joy to behold. That's why I say you're going to love it. So there's the low quality animation that I produced with Adobe Character Animator. So keep in mind, it could have been even better, more crisp, more beautiful than it currently is. So that's what it takes to create a character animation in the pro version of Adobe Character Animator. Simply go here to the home button, select your character, that will take you to the record screen where you make sure that the lip sync is turned on. You do need to calibrate your camera, make sure audio is turned on, get ready to use some controls and to click and drag on the hands of the character and then make sure that your background is chosen the way you want it to be and then click record. After you record, do a quick export and you've got a video. At this point though, I want to direct your attention here to the upper left. We do have some other buttons. There's a stream option that lets you live stream your character. I may show that in a future video. We have the record screen that I already showed you earlier. We have a rigging screen. This is a very advanced feature that can change how the character responds to your face to your other movements, and then we have the home button. So if I click on that home button, it takes me back to the puppet maker. And I'll do a full separate video on the character animator puppet maker, but just as a quick preview, I'm gonna click open puppet maker because the one thing about character animator that's not ideal is that it only gives us 25 or 30 different characters. What if I want a character besides those 25 or 30 that are included? Well, this puppet maker is one of the things I can do to expand the number of puppets that are available. When the Puppet Maker opens up, it selects one of these default characters, 
and you can click through and choose a different style of character if you want. So just find the character that you would like to use. I'm gonna go with this one here. So I click to load up this style of character. After choosing the style of character, I can then customize various aspects of the character. So I'm gonna change the skin color of the character, the body shape, the face shape, the hairstyle, the hair color, the eyes, and eyewear. I'll take the glasses off. I can add earrings or take them off if I would like. I can change the nose of the character or its mustache or even take the mustache off. Same with the beard, I could take the beard off. I can even choose the color of the shirt for the character and the background color. Once I've made my choices about the character, I can go here to the upper right and give the character a name, click generate, and then my character will be pulled into the scene and I've moved to the record screen. And I'm ready to press record to record my wonderful animation. So this has been the beginner's guide to the pro version of Adobe Character Animator. If this video proves to be popular, I may make additional videos in the future about Character Animator. It's just an amazing tool that can help us create engaging and interesting educational materials or other professional materials. Character Animator is used used by Hollywood, by TV studios to produce professional content. It's also useful in education and in many other settings. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do that is to become a channel member. You could also click the thanks button below the video. You could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video.